Dodging arrows from my past I had no hope for tomorrow Felt so much pressure, yes I thought I would crack But now there's no looking back I'm moving forward cause I know I got my armor now, no fear, no doubt Can't shoot me down, yeah I got my armor now, no fear, no doubt Gonna shoot me down, 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 down Hope in life and Merry Christmas. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning for Sunday service. I just want to extend an invitation to you to extend an invitation to your friends, those that maybe your family, those that watch with you. Um, maybe you can share this on Facebook and just let them know that we're on this morning. I know that the holidays can be a very hard time for some. You know, for years past when people experience things, it, it can be a difficult time when you face the holidays, sometimes when you face them alone. So would you let them know that we're on today? Let them know they're not alone. We're there with them. And most importantly, Jesus is with them. If you've got a prayer request today, I just wanna ask you, if you would, if you're watching by Facebook, just write it there in the comments section. We have staff that want to pray with you, a prayer member that wants to pray for you specifically in your need. So please let us know. That's what we're here for today. We love you, church. As we go into worship this morning, I know God has something great in store for us. We're looking forward to what this day holds. Good morning. What a wonderful day it is to worship the Lord. Hope in life. Come on, come on. Gather around your TV. Gather around your computer. It is time to praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready out there? Are you ready? Come on, gather the family. Let's bless the name of Jesus today. Woo! Come on, put your hands together.
stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? continue to lift up the King of yeah. Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords. His Lord. heart is for us. God, you yes, are for is. us. We're so grateful today, God. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me to know his love.
Hey guys, we're so glad that you're with us. We know you enjoyed worship and uh, it just sets the atmosphere and prepares your heart, of course, to get right into the Word. We're going to do that here just in a moment, but we also want to welcome you again to our home. Uh, a lot of uh, this time during the pandemic, we've, we've been taping, we've been at a lot of different locations. Uh, your uh, family's home, my family, mm -hmm. uh, here. We've been out on location. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've done a number of things. It's, yeah. been, it's been an amazing um, and I've heard someone talk about something being brutal, where it's beautiful and brutal at the same, at the time. same time. Yeah. And, and these last, I guess it's eight months, eight months or, or, or seven months or feels like Nine seven months. years. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're giving birth to something yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, but long story short, these last so many months, uh, we've been everywhere, you know, doing many different things. We're thankful to everyone that's been helping us as well that's uh, been making all this happen. But this is our house, of course. And so I think it's important to talk about how well that my beautiful wife does in just preparing our home. Uh, we've always had a number of trees when we had a small little apartment to a, a little bit bigger house we were renting to the house, you know, a house here and then now this one. And uh, that's been since we've been married now because mm -hmm. we're getting ready to go on next year. 30, 30 years. years. All right. Yeah. That's right. August the 10th will be 30 yeah. years of marriage. Uh, but um, the last eight years or so, my favorite, my favorite tree has always been the big one that you see behind us that we've had now for close to 15, 12 mm -hmm. to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And that is a prefab tree that comes up in many different pieces. It's all put together and then Gwen makes it look amazing. Uh, but uh, over the last eight years, being a part of Buy a Tree, Change a Life, we have always had one live tree among all the rest of the decorations that we have. <laughs> My it's, favorite tree. I love uh, the it, live tree. It, I love it too. And this year you just put a whole lot of extra love into it. Did a great job. It's extra big this year. It's That's right. really it's a, big. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a very large tree. And you know what Gwenny did? I, she took some of the things that you had clipped off to really kind of shape it because a live tree comes in a point that you have to shape right yeah yeah and you actually kind of threaded it back in at certain points right to well make there were some full. bare spots so we just filled in and made it look like a saved martha stewart I right found here out, no, i you. found out that's how they do the rockefeller center tree that's how they do it they trim it and then they put branches in to make it look that beautiful. so we got the brockefeller right there we go yeah there we go <laughs> anyways amazing job so our two favorite trees this one of course that has just been in our family for uh, so many yeah, so many for years a long time. and then of course the one that's real a real tree that we know buying a tree that kind of tree changes a life yeah, that's, and so that's why it's my favorite yeah yeah it's, love, it's outstanding it. but uh, it wouldn't look it wouldn't look great without the love you put on it and so we've well you know we what love, i couldn't you. do it without you and the boys helping me bring it all upstairs so you know what it's as much you as it is me because it Ooh. could never get done if y'all didn't help me get it up the stairs it's just too heavy so. okay okay thank well. you you. Well, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Guys, we love you and appreciate you. Of course, this is the holidays, and uh, Gwen already said it at the top earlier, but Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, we love you. We're thankful for yes. you. Um, we're so excited uh, that you're a part of what uh, we're a part of. We're a part of you. And uh, I know the Lord has something special to speak to us today, um, yeah. right there out of Luke chapter 2. Uh, but before we get there, we're going to take up a little offering. We also have some special guests we want to introduce here in a moment. Yeah. Uh, but also give you some uh, announcements mm -hmm. uh, that are that are coming up, some things that are very important. Mm -hmm. December 20th, uh, we will be having communion there in the parking lot for uh, that Sunday. It will be um, a Christmas service that we'll be having together, but it will be a communion service that we'll be taking, uh, partaking in communion together there at the Grayson High School parking lot service. Those of you that are at home, that watch at home, you can join us that Sunday yeah. to, to partake of communion with us online. But that will be happening on December 20th, which is next Sunday. That's right. So the, we'll, the weather's the weather's good. The weather looks like it's going to yeah, be okay. Yeah. Um, so if the weather holds, holds up, and, uh, and really rain's the only thing that would keep us from being yeah. able to be out there. But yeah. uh, we should be able to have communion there in the parking lot. And then of course, as we've done throughout this pandemic uh, online as well, those that are with us uh, through YouTube and Facebook, you guys can take uh, communion with us. And we'll do that on online. Exactly. Also on that Sunday, and this is totally another side note to that Sunday, of course, communion being um, the focus of that Sunday. But we will be having Krispy Kremes for all of you that will be out and in the parking at, lot Only at the parking us. lot, not at your house. Unless you I was gonna say, we can't bring them to your house, yeah. unfortunately. But we will have them there in the parking lot for everyone that will be joining us on December 20th. Yeah, so a little High coffee, School. a little Krispy Kreme donuts, um, and then we'll take communion at some point during the service mm -hmm. there face-to-face, uh, -face, but hopefully you as well will be uh, able to take communion with us online. You can partake in Krispy Kreme as well. You just have to go ahead in advance and get yours and have them there. Get That's them right. Saturday, bring That's them home right. and have them Sunday morning. Make, right? it, make it happen. <laughs> you know, that will be also uh, Sunday the 20th. Uh, next week will be the last Sunday that we'll have in the parking lot um, as we're heading into the, the real heart of the holidays. Mm -hmm. So everything from that point on is going to be online. So we'll have an online New Year's, but we'll have our midweek meetups. We're going to continue those. Right. And uh, 
we're uh, we're going to be having our special guest that we'll be introducing here just in a moment as well having a they'll be with us throughout the rest of the month also providing um, some entertainment uh, Christian entertainment uh, with what we're doing but um, we will have our Christmas Eve our New Year's Eve mm -hmm. um, our midweek meetups and then even our last Sunday of the month which is the 27th all of that will be online so yeah. after Sunday the 20th There'll be no online. There'll be no face-to-face -face services there in the parking lot. Everything will be online throughout the rest of the year. Excited about the 27th because the apostle is going to be preaching. Yeah. Uh, my dad, uh, your, your call-in-law. Yeah, we're looking forward. Yeah, to we. That. That's, that's the way it's been for a number of years. He's always mm -hmm. been there to minister mm -hmm. the last Sunday of the year. Uh, we would be gone uh, to Ohio when your family's yeah. living in Ohio, or we'd be able to go out and take do a little vacation or time together. And the apostle, or my father, would finish the Brock. He would finish mm -hmm. out everything. And so we're going to do that as well. So he's uh, preparing already uh, something. He talked to me about it today, of what he know God's, knows that God has put into his heart. And uh, so be ready for that on the 27th. I know it's going to challenge you uh, and prepare you to finish out the year heading into next year uh, even, uh, even stronger. So that's, uh, that's a good deal. So after the 20th, everything's going to be online. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, the apostle will finish out the year for us. But we're uh, excited about how uh, candlelight's going to be, as well as uh, how we're going to have yeah. or handle um, our um, New Year's Eve service. We'll talk more about that as we get a little closer to that. Uh, but those are always special moments that we're going to make sure that uh, we spend time with you. If you're Amen. able to jump online, YouTube or Facebook, to be with us. Definitely, definitely. We're not going to let, um, even though the pandemic has, has really stretched all of us this year and it's caused things to be so different, we're not going to let those things that we normally do, candlelight, New Year's Eve service. We're just not going to let those things go by without having that time together. A little different this year, but it's going to be a really great, great time and an enjoyable time together. So yeah. we're looking forward to so it. So just be, be, be looking out there for all the information, of course, yeah. that's on uh, the different social, social media. media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that'll mm -hmm. that'll give you information on what is up. Uh, our emails, if you're on our email uh, database, that should be coming out to you. And I even do put yeah. a phone call out to folks that are on that, that database. And so it should get out there to you so you can be a participant in it. Uh, also, uh, kind of keeping this more of a tease, but uh, we have some real opportunities as we get out of this year, 2020, heading into 2021. You know, the, the weather gets the worst here around in our area um, there in January on down through March. Yeah. So the parking lot is something that we're um, not going to be out and be a part of. We actually have another opportunity that has opened up. It's really exciting. We'll tell you more about it. But today's just really a tease and won't be saying anything uh, out in the parking lot, you know, differently than what we're saying right here. So just telling folks that there's some things coming and some things that we're excited about, but it'll be an opportunity for us to, to be in a, in, a, in a building uh, so that uh, we're able to, to um, deal with the, the different uh, the weather. The inclement weather. The, yeah, the, the non-cooperative uh, weather. The cold weather. weather is what it's going to come down to, yeah. right? And really, really, um, you, you know, y'all lived here for a minute like we have. It just gets really rainy and yeah. very cold yeah. here January through February on down into even March. And so the Lord has once again provided for us an opportunity where yes, we can yes. meet. So we'll talk to you more about that. It's really exciting. And uh, it's, it's really going to be a blessing. So Be watching those good. of you that are on our Facebook page, our Hope and Life Moving Forward yes. page. Make sure that you're watching that because that's where that announcement is going to be rolling out to all of our church um, members and, mm -hmm. and, and people that are there with us at Hope and Life. So make sure that you're watching that probably in the next week. I would, yeah. I would think in the next week that information will be getting to you. That's right. We'll go there first and then we'll bring it on out to these uh, more public right. platforms. Right. So um, we are going to talk about giving yeah. and uh, the privilege that we have to give. And so uh, I don't know what the Lord maybe has put on your heart just to talk about or what uh, you might be thinking? Well, you know, just just like we said last week, I just want to reiterate, you, you've been so faithful in your giving this year, church, yeah. and it's been such a blessing to the church and to so many people. You know, um, we haven't been able to do things the traditional way that we've mm -hmm. done them in the past, but uh, I just want you to know, and, and, and I don't know how much you'll share maybe even later, but we're helping uh, a number of families that have been yeah. in need this year. Um, and so we're we're blessed to be able to do that. And we're blessed to do that, church, because you have been so faithful and so generous in your giving. And so um, we are just beyond grateful for that because there are five uh, specific little children that we know of this year that are going to be having yeah. a Christmas. Um, and we're just thrilled that we're able to help those. But there's many others that we're helping as well. But those five in particular yeah. that were actually really taking care of their Christmas and, and they wouldn't have it if not for your giving. And so we just want to say thank you for what you've done um, throughout the year. And, and even now at the end of the year, we thank you so much as you, as you give and as you're faithful. Yeah, you can't help. Uh, but be blessed when you That's give right. uh, unto right. the least. And so we were uh, 
made aware of a need by one of the local uh, uh, vice principals there in, in, her, in our area mm -hmm. of a family that was in dire straits. And so we as a church, they, they asked if we could help, and of yeah. course we could help. So yeah. uh, we've stepped up to do that, and we couldn't do that without your assistance. That's right. And then, of course, through Buy Tree Change Your Life, we know that all the money that is uh, gained through that goes to help locally as well as globally children right. that are in need. And so uh, partnering with the Bridge Church, we were able to sell out all of our trees as well as many of you. We have some wonderful sponsors that have stepped up, and so all of that is able to also help us make yeah. a difference. And so, and then even... Uh, we're going to be gathering some toys up as well that mm -hmm. uh, one of our folks had talked to us about this. And so there's uh, toys and bicycles and things as well that we're going to be able to uh, give to families uh, that are in need. And then yeah. a really cool thing as well, I just want you to know that we were able through the Dream Center uh, to actually give out over 70 or close to about 100 blankets and uh, uh, ball caps or scully caps as well as um, gloves, um, gloves mm -hmm. uh, to those that are uh, downtown uh, here in our city uh, and uh, that are that are homeless yeah. and and with the pandemic I mean it's it's created even a more sense of homelessness for yeah. many of them where yeah. there would be shelters and things they could come into uh, as we were talking to a lot uh, of shelters have closed down that's and, right yeah. we were talking to yeah. one of the representatives that uh, it's it's created a whole other you know problem yeah. which it was already a problem so yeah. but thank you because we were able to do all those things uh, because of you giving and yeah. God blessing you and then you continue to be a blessing so thank, thank you guys you, of course church. you know thank how to you, give they're you, online you. text to give uh, you can mail it there to the P.O. box many of you that will maybe be with us next week there in the parking lot there for mm -hmm. communion and Krispy Kreme um, <laughs> I want to make sure we're saying we're not taking communion with Krispy Kreme <laughs> but we're gonna be having communion then of course uh, Krispy Kreme and coffee there on that Sunday um, you can bring that tithe or that offering there with you but every bit of it is a blessing and and uh, we just love and appreciate you guys so, so much. So yeah. we always say a statement of faith of our time of tithe and offering. And so let's, uh, let's just do this together. Right. Upon the authority of, of your word, word I, I have given, given and it shall be given, given to me. To me. Press, Press down, down shaken, shaken together, and, and running, running over. over. I, I am a tither. tither. Bring, bring my tithe, tithe today into your storehouse. storehouse. Therefore, Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The, the curse is broken. broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Of course, everything that we just declared, of course, is right out of God's word. And God's word in our mouth is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. And so uh, we speak the word, but now we act on that. So go ahead, if you would, give online, give text to give, of course, uh, mail that out to the P.O. Box. Or we'll see you in the parking lot where we can take an offering up on next Sunday. Now we have special guests and I want you to go ahead and, and we're going to have we them on, uh, throughout the rest of the month. They're going to be blessing us and so we excited do. about this. We do. We love the Katinas so much. Ah, the Katinas. We, I, he, my favorite. I say it's like his brothers, right? Your brothers from another Well, they call mother, her right? a cousin, so I'm just a, co I'm a, co I'm <laughs> a, a cousin. cousin. So a cousin. I'm, a, I'm one of the cousins of the Katinas. But we're so happy to have the Katinas with us this morning and they are singing one of my absolute favorites. I love this song and I know many of you, I've heard many of you comment about this too, but they're singing Peace, Love, Hallelujah. Woo. All right. I'll say peace. Feel the love. And I say hallelujah. Say. If not for your mercy, if not for your grace. around the world, goodwill to man, y'all. If not for your mercy, if not for your grace, don't know where I'd be low on happy days. I thank you for your mercy, I thank you for your grace. I smile cause I feel much better than okay. Peace, love, hallelujah, all my hands up to you, dancing all the day. Hallelujah, but I give it to you. Say it, this 
I know you enjoyed that, man. I do. Yeah. We talked about love it just before Katinas. we introduced them, but do love and appreciate uh, the Katinas and all their family because yeah. uh, they're not just uh, performers, even though they they perform well. You know, they're yeah. not just musicians and vocalists, even though they're they are that. Yeah. Uh, they're they're first and foremost, um, you know, folks that just love the Lord with all their heart, and then they're talented no second. It. No and so, uh, peace, it. love, and hallelujah. How'd you do that? What <laughs> peace? No. no How we do it? Oh yeah, love. yeah, peace. Hallelujah. I was going to do that, but that's that's the wrong. But yeah, love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But hey, we want to take the next couple of weeks, um, this week and next week, because, of course, we said earlier the apostle will be ministering there on the last the Sunday 27th. of the month, there on the 27th. Mm-hmm. But I want to talk to you about just some of the important people, of course, that uh, that we know go along with this season. I'm talking about those very familiar um, suspects, Mary and, of course, uh, the little baby Jesus there in the manger, uh, shepherds, angels. I mean, a- angels were so key in, in making uh, specific announcements prior to important happenings around uh, yeah. the holidays uh, when we know we had the first Christmas, yeah. uh, but as well not only present making announcements, but then also uh, even dreams. Joseph had a dream. Matthew That's speaks right. about how Joseph had a dream, how that he should take Mary as his wife and uh, betrothed and now be, be uh, of course, married. And uh, he did that. He followed. It's always good to follow what an angel tells you to do. <laughs> I listen to this one all the time. Oh, uh, that's good. But um, but, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but, uh, but long story short, um, today we want to talk about Mary. And uh, I'm always, I have always been intrigued uh, with that verse 7 of Luke chapter 2, uh, where it ends talking about there being no room in the end. Now, let me read this, and then we're going to talk about just, the, just some things we're going to unpack today um, uh, that goes along with making room. For, for Jesus in our life, and that at times there are so many things that leave us with no room and uh, leaving no opportunity for Jesus. But here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 2. Get your Bibles if you got them there with you. Uh, pull up maybe your Bible app and, uh, uh, or whatever you might have that you look on. Blue Letter Bible, a lot of that's out there. Uh, but read there with me. Look on with me if you would there in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 on down through verse 7. Uh, this is the beginning of, uh, of course, what we know as the Christmas story. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. You know what's important about all of that? It's it's information. It's, of course, in the Word. But also what it does, it it time stamps. And and we know that these events that we're talking about, I mean, the Bible doesn't start off with this story, of course, that we know is the Christmas story, is that once upon a time, you know, (laughs) a guy met a gal. It's not a fairy tale. Right. Um, The way that starts right there gives us somewhat a sense of history that has been proven. Mm -hmm. So this... All that you just talked about, those leaders that I just read about and that you heard about, every bit of that is is factual. That's right. And, and these events happened back then, and these folks were a part of it. Right. So on to verse 3, it says, So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now, of course, if you know the Christmas story, they're betrothed, they're not married. Joseph has had the dream uh, where the angel had said to him, we might get into that next week, uh, but ultimately the dream had been given to him. The angel spoke to him and said, you know, Mary is 
pregnant, but mm -hmm. this is not um, where she has been in some uh, adulterous affair. Right. There's been no misconduct, no sin. This is something that God has caused. She's carrying the Christ child. Yeah. You know what? Be be her husband. Be uh, the stepfather, if you will, to to the to the baby Jesus. And so he he followed. He, he right. pursued. Now, when it says that they left, I mean, it probably was good for them to get out of town, right? Because probably, yeah. What? I mean, well, I'm sure there were people talking. I'm sure there was, mm -hmm. you know, that this didn't happen on the on the norm. You know, this wasn't the norm. So I'm right. sure it, it probably made perfect sense for them to leave and to be gone from there. For right. those reasons. And, and, and that's where I think the word even goes on to say here. It says um, um, there that Joseph and Mary went to Galilee. And it talked about later on how that the days were completed. I think mm -hmm. there, let's we read verse 5 on down through verse 6. It says, uh, so um, they went to Bethlehem, left Nazareth down in that area, went to Bethlehem. That's about an 80-mile walk or an 80-mile trek. Um, you know, for us, 80 miles in our vehicles, not a big deal. 80 miles uh, um, walking or a donkey. Pregnant? Big deal. Wow. Big deal. Yeah. My goodness. Big deal. Um, to be registered with Mary. It says the day he went to be registered with Mary and his, betro his betrothed wife, verse 5, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. That does give us the thought that maybe they had went a little earlier. That I, I tend to always think, and they just got on, went rolling, you know, she's nine months pregnant. and that. But they were there probably a little while, yeah. and they were able to get out of Nazareth, make their way on over into... Uh, well, because as well, this was a fulfillment also uh, of a prophetic promise right. that the Christ child would come out of, out of Bethlehem. Right. So um, there they are. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and the days were completed, which means she's ready to, they're ready to have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for Jesus to be delivered. And the Bible says in verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger or a feeding trough. We would know that. Right. And uh, it says, because there was, and here's the thought that I had a moment ago that we need to make room for the Lord, uh, because here at the end, it says that there was no room for them in the inn. Now, when, when you read that, the inn, it makes, you know, almost feels like, ah, oh, you know. They, the Holiday Inn? They, they, were, they had their reservation there at the bed and breakfast, and it just no. got, you know, there were too many people because everyone same. had to go and be registered. Everyone, everyone was doing this. The Roman government was sanctioning this. The Roman government ruled and everything at that point in time. And so everybody had to go do this thing. And so the cities, as well as these small, this was a small place, small, yeah. small little village was filled up. But as I said, it sounds, you know, so romantic, like a little a bed and breakfast. But what it was was probably a place just where those that were not common to the area or living there could stay in this little village. But ultimately, there was no room. Yeah. Now, it's amazing that um, Jesus, um, knowing who he was or mm -hmm. who he was going to be, mm -hmm. uh, not yet born, but going to be born there, I mean... You know, think think of the money, the revenue that could have come in that, you know, here's the place where the Christ child was born, yeah. you know, yeah. even for that innkeeper or the one that had the space, that extra room. But there was no room, and so they were put there in the back. And what it really was was probably a cave, some type of cave opening that had some type of area where animals were kept, mm -hmm. and that was a stable. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, there was no room. Now, we seize on that thought because in our hearts... You know, do we have room for the Lord? Do we make room in our, in our, in our life for our Heavenly Father? Well, yeah. there wasn't room, and he was put out, and it was a uncomfortable. I can't, you know, you know, we're not people that have been around farms a ton, but no. I have been out in situations, though, where obviously, I mean, it's not the, the best-smelling kind of place. It's, you know, it's not just It's a, not the place you want to yeah. have your child, bring your right. infant right. into this world. It's not necessarily the... Hy it's not hygienic, a sterile clean, hospital. Clean, yeah, <laughs> it's not all that, that kind of, of stuff. Yeah, it's not that kind of surrounding at right. all. Right, and, uh, and, but this is where, uh, of course, the Christ child was born. You know, we had a situation one time where um, we were traveling back before we were pastoring, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I forget what had us coming out of Arkansas, coming through Memphis, Tennessee, across Tennessee. I, I don't remember. It's been that long ago, 20, 20 years time. ago. Uh, but it was later at night. But I do know that there was some type of weather issue that we... Uh, I. I don't know if we had a cell phone or what we did, or I stopped with a pay phone because this was back 
before some of that stuff. Maybe we had one of them big cell have, phones. Yeah, we had the big, this big giant shoe right. cell phone kind of thing. But we went ahead. We made reservations, and we, stopped, we were stopping there in Nashville because we knew there was some bad weather. We were getting out of where we were coming from. I think Memphis or somewhere a little further west. And so we made reservations. But something had happened with the weather and so forth that so many people had come to that place where we stayed. And I don't know where it was, uh, you know, and not that it needs to be yeah, said. But uh, long story short, we had a, we had a confirmation number mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we made we reservation. Ahead and made That's a right. Reservation, right. We rolled in late, somewhere around two o'clock. But hey, we'd already called and made reservation. Well, they kind of gave us this deal as well. You know, you're coming in too late. Well, well, we went ahead and called ahead. We made the confirmation, yeah. and uh, we kind of had a moment moment there. I, I don't think I lost my cool, but. Uh, uh, but ultimately, I just realized, hey, but we're you going. Had a wife and three three babies in a That's car right. that needed there, some place to There's a room in this place somewhere yeah. for us, or we're going to stay with you. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the work, the person working at the front, and uh, you know, they realized that. I mean, because we were a long way from home, we were mm -hmm. living in Cincinnati at the time, and so there's no way we we're going to drive all night with a small family. Yeah. I, and the weather I wasn't, being bad, no. and yeah. And so we were we were stuck in a real uh, tough situation where there was no room. No room. No room, and. Uh, you know, and what ha actually happened was when you guys came in, the kids came in, I mean, I tried to milk it as much as I had to say, look, it's just us. We can't stay in our car. <laughs> they say that they do keep one room, that they never, ever really rent the room, but it's mm -hmm. just kept back for extreme situations. And so um, it was cave-like. What I mean by that is the room had was like an in interior room. Yeah. It had one bed. It was very no marginal. No windows. No windows. There was no windows to this room. No way to escape the room if there was any kind of no. fire or something. I mean, it, it's the weirdest room I've ever Never stayed really in one no. before and never stayed in one since. It's and we, we have, bizarre. you know, you, me, and three kiddos. So we brought the pack and play in, put them in the, in the pack and play. Yeah, we were Maybe all had a little over right the bed us. sleeping, yeah. and it was a mess. They, they found some room for us, yeah. and it, it wasn't a stable, but it definitely wasn't uh, the room we had thought we were going to have. And uh, we knew what it was to kind of be put out, you know. And I think we have to realize that oftentimes, maybe where we were put into a, in a comfortable situation, what happens is, is that we also sometimes approach the Lord that way. You know, the Lord's already sent his son Jesus to provide for us. We, we believe in him. But then, you know, he shows up and wants things a certain way, and we're not as comfortable with that. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're not as comfortable with that. And we have to make sure that we humble ourselves and that we put ourselves in a position so that we're able to receive what God has for us, you know, to make room. The story goes along and tells us, of course, that there was no room, and so Mary and Joseph were in a situation that was uncomfortable. It wasn't something that was sterile or proper. It right. was very humiliating in many ways, I'm probably sure. very poor sure. and, 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 and meager. But yet God sent his son to be at that point because it allowed us from the very immediate beginning of the life of Jesus here on the planet to know that God was sent to all men, mm -hmm. not just those that seemingly have it all together, but to Amen. everyone from the those that are in the highest places, but more importantly, those who are at the lowest ebbs. And so Amen. Jesus came to save all that would be willing to, to seek him and to call on him. But now, as we live, we've got to make room. There's another point where Jesus now is older and he's in his ministry. It's also found in Luke, Luke chapter 10. I want to, I want to read this to you. Uh, now we have Mary and Martha. Now it's not the same Mary, of course, his mom. This is Martha and Mary that are sisters, and uh, they're sisters of uh, Lazarus. Uh, you know Lazarus that Jesus raised from, from the dead later on in the book of John. Uh, but here in Luke chapter 10, the Bible says here in verse 38, I'll read on down through verse 42, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha. Now that lets us know Martha was the oldest because she was the one that was, you know, kind of inviting welcoming. and hosting, yeah, right, welcoming them. and uh, that Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister named Mary who also, who also, hear that, also meaning that they both participated in this, right, right. who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his words, so they were receiving from Jesus, mm -hmm. they were making room for him, mm -hmm. but Martha was distracted with much serving, because, you know, she felt the responsibility, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not sure. trying to say that she... Uh, you know, wasn't uh, responsible, but there's a point where those things can be distracting. Right. And it went on to say here that she was distracted with much serving, and she approached him, meaning Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? 
Therefore tell her to help me. Verse 41 on down through verse 42 says this, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So they both had served at one point in time, and now it was a time where Jesus was teaching and ministering and sharing, and they had sat at his feet. But the distraction of needing to serve and feeling a sense of responsibility actually took Martha, um, well, it had her at a place of having no room for that opportunity. Right. She was, she moved away. Right. And then when she came to Jesus saying, you know, fearing very justified, hey, you know, tell, tell my sister to get over here and help me because I'm doing this all by myself. And he just said, hey, she's what, pouring in, or she's receiving, she's making room right. uh, for the one thing that can't be taken from her, right? Exactly, exactly. I think too many times in life we can find ourselves in the position of Martha because it's not a bad position. It's a position of doing what you're supposed to mm-hmm. do in that place. I'm sure that's what she thought, this is what I'm to do. You know, I, I'm the eldest. I'm taking care of our home. I'm welcoming Jesus into the home. I'm serving. And, and it's easy. I've seen our kids do this. I've seen one of them say, you know, I'll ask one of them to do something and they'll say, well, can you get the other one to help me? You know, and, and I understand that. But at the same time, what Jesus was saying was, but what Mary was doing Mm -hmm. was so much more valuable and of so much more importance than what Martha was doing. Not to, not to say that Martha wasn't doing something important, but her priorities or things had gotten out of skew and, and she needed to be focused on Jesus just as Mary was focusing, completely focused on Jesus, making you know, I, all room for him. I think him. we at times tend to, we'll, we'll read this and we'll label folks, oh, well, Mary's the one who's working hard, or Martha's the one who's working hard, Mary's the one who's kind of uh, lazily yeah, just kind of, yeah. you know, shirking her responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. But the scripture doesn't speak to that. The scripture Not speaks that all. they were they were serving and then they were, right. you know, you, you read into that because, you know, uh, obviously, they had served at one point, but now they're mm-hmm. sitting at the feet of Jesus. And mm-hmm. so it wasn't that one was super spiritual and the other was uh, super task-oriented. Right. They both had those opportunities. Just one was distracted. And when we're distracted, are we allow things to kind of overwhelm us or consume us, which, I mean, the year of 2020 has overwhelmed us and, and just consumed our thoughts exactly. and minds and hearts exactly. in so many ways that what happens is we see her missing out because there's no room. Mm-hmm. No room left. She's mm-hmm. so distracted that Jesus actually says her name twice. If you heard me read that there where he says, Martha, Martha. And that's a way of speaking with emphasis. You know, when the word talks there, how that holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's what the angels say around the throne. It's not that they just repeat themselves, just repeat themselves, but that's the way that, that the authors would, would use um, emphasis. I would say to emphasize. To emphasize. He's not just holy, but he's holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Jesus as well knew she was so just absorbed uh, and just overwhelmed with the responsibility and really missing out on the opportunity yeah. um, that he said, Martha, hey, Martha, you're so distracted by this stuff that you're missing out on what, what will feed you, what will bless you. Mary's... She's taking it. She's making room for me. You know, you need to make room for me because, you know, we're never going to run out of dishes in the sink. We're never right. going to run out of having to take the garbage out to the curb. We're never right. going to run out of bills and, and stuff, let alone, um, you know, these things that we never could have planned for mm-hmm. that all of a sudden are here. We're praying there will be an end to it, you know, and that God is working. We're, already, we're continuing to pray that that's going to come to an end. Uh, of course, COVID-19, and we'll get through this by the grace of God. But life still happens. You know, I'm thinking about at the beginning of the year, so many of us in in, in the church world, we looked at 2020 as, you know, the year of perfect vision, right? right? 2020, perfect vision. easy to have that thought. And, you know, your vision is about what you focus on. Mm -hmm. And obviously in this story, you see how Martha was focused in one area and Mary was focused in another. And how losing focus... Mm-hmm. can cost you your relationship, can cost you your, your yep. loss of focus, can literally pull you away from things, you know, distractions, or in this case, pull you away from the Lord, pull you away from mm-hmm. that, that position of just sitting and hearing from Him. And even in this year, in the year of 2020, yep. you know, it, it would be easy to lose focus on what this year, yep. you know, what's happened in this year. It'd be easy to well, lose think focus. Think of it that the innkeeper or the place where they could have stayed, he missed it. Yeah. And Jesus was saying, hey, Martha, you're going to miss this. Right. Mary was the one that was receiving. She wasn't missing her moment. The others just didn't have room for it. Right. And so we want to give you a couple of points today, I think, that will prepare you to finish the year strong, move into next year stronger. But part of it is not missing the moments, not yeah. missing the opportunity that God has for us to finish this year of 2024 His glory. Amen. Um, and so... The first thing is, first point is, refocus on what matters most. Mm -hmm. We have to refocus on what matters most, Mm -hmm. of course. If the innkeeper knew who was there, 
I, there's no way. They would have found a room. He just, would have given him his own like, private room in hey, his home, I'm sure. Just like that person working the desk. I mean, when we kept pressing in, and I brought the family in, and we're just sad eye and them, and, you know, <laughs> hey, they found a room for us. I mean, I guess it was a room. I don't know what. It was a closet with a bed, and it seemed like. But ultimately, if they'd have known, they'd have found a room. They'd have moved, they'd have moved whatever they needed to move, moved whoever out if they knew that this was the Son of God. But yeah. the moment was missed yeah. as well. Martha was distracted. So when we think of refocusing on what matters, Here's a couple things that I think is that, that, that truly matter. Relationships matter. If there's anything yeah. that I think we've learned in this year is that relationships are vital. Oh, so important. Right? Mm-hmm. So important. They so matter. Important. I, I read an article just the other day, um, and it was such a cool article. It was about a, an actual um, uh, NFL player that uh, this past Sunday, uh, they were wearing a cleats uh, that uh, spoke to different types of uh, um, causes causes or? that they were for, and mm-hmm. and this uh, particular athlete was uh, wearing cleats that referenced Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which was really mm-hmm. an awesome thing. So there were a couple of other uh, football players who did the same thing, but when he was being interviewed, uh, the player he talked about he talked about how that uh, that the pandemic. He said it this way: he said uh, it's amazing how that the pand- pandemic has broken down barriers to where it's not weird to ask your neighbor how they're doing anymore. Mm-hmm or even weird or strange to call people that you've not talked to in a long time. Yeah. Well, what are we being made aware of? We need to focus on what matters. Relationships matter. And the pandemic now, I mean, I've done it too. I remember I've called, you know, people I haven't talked to in a long time, yeah. people that I appreciate, to check folks in I went to school with, folks yeah. I was in college with, just yeah. you're calling and checking on people. I yeah. have found myself speaking to people more, even though now, often it has, it's, <laughs> there's a mask between it's muffled, us. It's muffled, but... <laughs> but... Speaking to my neighbors, speaking yeah. to uh, just, just yesterday, I mean, um, I was out and, and it was just a little gas station where I was just getting some things there on my way back here to the house. And the lady behind the deal was frustrated. And uh, I recognized, not with me, but just kind of with some things. Yeah. And I talked to her. We had a little bit of a moment where I just kind of was encouraging her. It's going to be okay, you know. And um, I don't know how I would have responded to that. You, I want to believe that I'm led by the Lord. But at times, I have to be like you and me. There's, I haven't found room for that. Yeah. I was too busy. Yeah. You know, I just missed, maybe missed a moment. But I really do believe that... Uh, a part of us refocusing on what matters is that relationships matter. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 how that the threefold cord is not easily broken. And yeah. so, you know, you and me with the Father involved in our life, I mean, it's not broken. We need to yeah. make sure that we're, we're connected. Uh, another part that matters, or well, that's important and that, uh, that matters, is uh, purpose matters. We need mm-hmm. to live on purpose, right? Amen. Yes, we do. It's, it's our purpose, and sometimes I don't know if we always know. A lot of times we don't know what our purpose is. I think in this year there are so many people that have found their purpose because Things have slowed down to where you can focus more on relationships, which might help you to find out mm-hmm. what your purpose is. I think that's so vital and so important, um, knowing what your purpose is, finding your purpose. Amen? Making room for the, God, the purpose that God has for exactly. you, making room for relationships in your life. Exactly. Here's a scripture that goes along with that idea of purpose. It's found in Acts 20 and verse 24. Um, yeah, verse. Uh, I was going to say verse 44. Uh, it says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, uh, which a man found and hid. And for the joy of it, he goes and sells all, and he buys the field. Mm-hmm. Understand the importance that that field there is uh, is of course heaven, and his purpose is wrapped up in that. So you know, finding that in the field, he didn't just find it, but he purchased that field. See. You and I have to make sure that we lean into not only relationships, but also because we're, we're refocusing, first point on what matters, relationships matter. Our relationship with God, our relationship with one another. Secondly, purpose matters. Yeah. Eternity matters. Yes. Eternity matters. Amen. You know, that we're prepared for eternity. So mm-hmm. first and foremost, to make sure we finish this year in a proper way, we focus on what matters. And relationships with God and then with each other matter making sure that we're tapping into our purpose that God has for our life and knowing that ultimately that life doesn't end here. It just go, it, it bleeds into the eternal with our Heavenly Father. Right. Um, also, second point uh, is that uh, we need to reduce the things uh, that are non-essential. You know, for you and I to, to make room, that, that goes right along with there, Matthew chapter 10, or Luke chapter 10. You know, there's some things that were important, but they're really non-essential compared to sitting down and hearing Jesus. Yeah. Uh, they were distractions. Uh, they had to be accomplished eventually, mm-hmm. but ultimately they were non-essential when it came down to what was, what was important. Right, right. We've heard a lot about essential things this year, have we not? Mm-hmm. It's been one of those kind of buzzwords that have just the essential uh, PPE, the, essen- the right. essential, I mean, let's be honest, the essential things you need in your home. You remember just like I, 
there was no toilet paper on shelves. I mean, those are essential things yeah. that you need in your life. Those are the things. But the other things, you don't need all these other things, just the things that are of most importance, That's right. of most value in your life. Well, and so to make sure that we make room and that we're not the innkeeper that has no room or even Martha that's in the room with Jesus, yeah. but yet she's distracted and right. has no room to hear Jesus. We have to make sure that we focus or refocus on the things that matter. But then secondly, that we reduce the things that are non-essential. Let me mm-hmm. give you a scripture here that um, I believe is important, and that's found in Ecclesiastes once again, Ecclesiastes uh, 4 and verse uh, 6. The Bible says, better a handful with quietness, better one handful with quietness than both hands full together with toil and grasping for the wind. So this, it's better to have one hand full of what you need versus trying to have all this stuff and yeah. it ultimately is like grasping at the wind. Yeah. Scripture just talking there, the importance of making sure of what's essential, what, what is needed. Learning obviously time, at times to say no. Uh, is important. You know, learning to say no to certain things uh, will actually, I mean, it might affect your popularity, but honestly, there'll be a sense of respect that That's goes right. along with it. That's right. Because when you, when you say what you mean, mean what you say with love, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Right. Um, you know, there's been a lot of things we've had to say no to this year because we just can't look at this year like we had the years in the past because um, it just wasn't going to be safe or it yeah. wasn't something that was, um, you know, we could have just went headlong in, but it didn't make well, any sense for us Well, it's not always easy to say no. Right. You know, it's not always easy to say no, but sometimes it's essential that we say no. You yeah. know, sometimes we have to. Exactly. And so thirdly, after refocusing on what matters, and we talked about relationship with the Lord and with one another is what matters there. Uh, purpose is what matters. Uh, the eternal is what matters. Mm-hmm. We refocus on those things. And then secondly, we reduce the things that are non-essential. Then thirdly, we reprioritize your life. Let's yeah. reprioritize. And order matters when it comes down to what's going on in our life. If we don't prioritize, if we don't set standards in our life, if we don't say, hey, we're going to do this or we want to do this, then other things or other, pe- things or other people will prioritize all that. They'll, That's right. they'll, they'll say, well, hey, you're, we're important, but all of a sudden you'll start to feel like your life's being controlled. Yeah. But it's because you're not taking a sense of leadership, right? right? right. To lean in and say, right. you know, what we've been doing now as a church, we've been talking about prayer and fasting. Yeah. You know, we've prioritized, we prioritize prayer and fasting. How Every week is. we're fasting on Wednesdays. Um, all of you that want, if you... If you're with us, a part of Hope and Life, or you just watch us on the regular, look, jump into Wednesdays and start fasting with us. All that's found out of uh, Daniel chapter 1. Uh, jump on and begin to pray with us. We're praying three times a day, setting our phones to remind us and alert us to just take a moment to pray and ask and thank God, praise God. Even the prayer that Jesus was, when they asked him to pray, uh, he didn't give him some long, long, long prayer. It was a prayer that really hit some highlighted areas, uh, but it was also a prayer that could have could have been spoken very quickly. Yeah. I mean, the Lord's Prayer is something yeah. that you can say within a couple of minutes and then expound on it as you want. But ultimately, uh, we refocus on what matters, of course. Uh, we make sure that we define what's essential. But then as well, we reprioritize our life. And in reprioritizing the li- our life, it's making sure that order, now hear this, the order will determine the capacity of your life, yeah. how you order things, how you prioritize things. If you don't prioritize your life, things and other folks will yeah. take priority and begin to direct your life. But if we grab a hold of it here at the end of 2020, moving to 2021, making sure that we're focused on the things that matter, that we get rid of the things that are not essential, that we make room for the Lord, and then we reprioritize our life with what's important, the important things, then I truly believe, you know what, we're going to finish strong. Yeah. But head into the next year. I mean, I don't want to go into next year just knowing there's a vaccine and we kind of get out of this. And this, we talk about this thing that's been a once in a lifetime event. But then we're not changed. Yeah. We're not different. Yeah. We fall back into the same ruts that we were in. We've allowed a whole year to, to to dominate us in the way that it has. It, and we've not figured no. out some things about ourselves and and worked through some things. I then. mean, as godly, I mean, there, look, we we have to be we have to refocus. We have to yeah. uh, make determine what's essential. We have yeah. to let the Holy Spirit reprioritize our lives so that we're maximizing the major and minimizing the minor mm-hmm. and we are not the innkeeper that misses Jesus and we're not Martha that's in the room that misses Jesus we're right. we're Mary that serves when it's time to serve we're at the feet of Jesus when it's time to be at the feet of Jesus yeah. and that's the thing that if we are able and, and to make sure that we can prioritize and that the order that you allow things to be in your life uh, that's what will give you capacity to see some real profound things take place amen amen, amen. I believe that without a doubt 
Hey guys, I don't normally use like uh, little illustrations uh, like this, props, uh, that much in, in what we do, but, uh, but to, to, to really take this home and, and I think to really talk about, you know, either having room in our life for things or, or no room in our life, um, and, and really uh, that, it really was more of a fourth point there that the order will determine the capacity yeah. of your life, your capacity by what you prioritize, what you, what you make important. Right. So uh, this is a great example. Um, I, I saw this uh, many years ago, and it, I thought it was very, very cool. And so what we see here is inside of this container, this right here represents things in life that are, that are important things, busy things, but they're not things that are the most important. Right. And we're talking about this fourth point. So once again, refocus on what matters. Of course, reduce the non-essentials, reprioritize your life, and then order matters in making sure that you have the capacity that you need to be all God, that ca God has called you to be. And so these things can be um, emails. It can be Facebook. It can be... Um, uh, watching a Steelers game, you know, we like sure. that. Uh, whatever, it taking can, your kids to school, yeah, soccer practice, yeah, uh, all working those things. out. They're all important. Yeah, things. good thing. I mean, yeah. none of them are bad things. Yeah. But the thing is, there's some big things that are in your life. Your relationship with the Lord is should be number one. Relationship with your yeah. Lord. Uh, it, you know, your family. If you have yeah. a spouse and kids, or or if you're a single person by choice. I mean, you still have family in your life, or right. you know, however it goes. Family needs to be vital. You know, important, especially this time around the holidays. Yeah. You know, and then you think about your purpose and what you've been put on the planet to do. And honestly, what we see here is something that is not, um, it, it doesn't work. It, it, it's, everything's kind of in, but it's not in, in a, in a, in the right way. Right. Now, but if we make sure that we prioritize or that we put the important things in first, the order mattering, uh, you have another cylinder there. I want you to see this. If we, if we make sure that we make room. So we're not like Martha that didn't make room. We're not like the innkeeper that didn't make room. We're going to make room. So we're going to, we're going to prioritize God first. Mm -hmm. And let's just think about what the Scripture says. The Scripture says in Matthew 6 and 33 that if we seek first right. the kingdom of God, if we seek Him first, right. then all the things. All Th the this other. right here is things. Yeah. So first is God. Mm -hmm. So we put God in. Got Him there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a reach, right? He's in first. Um, family. Next. Your, your purpose, your ministry, you know, you, what, you know what, what you do, your occupation, all that, you know, there. Then look what happens. It's an amazing thing that takes place. And then we don't get rid of these things. You know, the Bible says the things will be added unto you. Right. Actually, the word goes on to talk about there that uh, we worry about these things that we wish we had. And, and Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33, basically tells us to not worry about these things, that right. pagans are folks that don't know the Lord worry about all these things. But if we put God in first, and then the other things that are priority, that the Lord lets us faith in God, family, and then our purpose, then what we do is we see where, watch how this, everything will fit in a way uh, that it's hard to believe before it didn't work. But now look, here you go. Everything fits. Yeah. Everything fits. Nothing is hanging out or exposed. Nothing is somehow kind of in a situation where it doesn't fit in the cylinder. Everything fits. So if we have God first and put him first in our life and then let those other things that are big rocks, if you will, are important things in life going first, then the other things fit where they're needing to fit. So in this time of the year, kind of the big idea that we finish up with is we've got to make room. And by making room, we mean put God first. Amen. That's the relationship, right? Amen. And I don't know, I noticed as you were filling this up, I realized, okay, initially with the other jar, the way you did it, everything was somewhat out of the top of yeah. this thing. Look, there's room. I mean, yeah. there's more room for more to, to be. And that's where seek him first, mm -hmm. then things will be added unto you. And, and abundance of things can be added unto you, but it has to be well, God first. I know you had it like I. I'm sure people, if, if, where you get up and you go after God first in the day, mm -hmm. much more is accomplished, it seems much like, than, in, than leaving it right. to when it gets convenient. It right. uh, just seems if we can squander our days much more. And we need to number our days, the Bible talks about. So exactly. we don't want to be wasteful. And if anything, I think we've realized that, uh, you know, this year that there's so many things that we thought would have been so important, stuff, things, and how that those things just couldn't keep us. But right. the stuff that matters the most, our faith, our family, 
the purpose that God's put in our heart. Those are the things the that are important. Things. The foundational right. stuff, the big things. Right. Those are the things we need to lean into to finish this year strong. Amen. Those are the things we need to stand on as we go into our next year. Amen. And then all this other stuff, and even as Gwenny said, which is great, there's even more room for other things in our life, but they're in the proper placement exactly. because now we have more capacity right. because we made room for Jesus. So. Let's don't be like the innkeeper that did make room. Let's don't be like Martha that didn't make room. Even though she was in the room, she still was not making room. Let's be like Martha. Let's, let's make sure that we are Mary, should I say. Let's be like Mary. Let's go and seek Jesus. Go after him because he's able to be found. And the word basically tells us, finishing up there in Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said, he says to, them, to us, he says, come to me all, you know, that are, yeah. that are overwhelmed, you know, and I will give you rest. And so we just pray that over you as we finish this year out. Amen. Uh, we'll be talking more about some important figures on Amen. next uh, Sunday that were a part of uh, this time of the year, Joseph and angels and, of course, shepherds. Uh, but we're thankful for the example of Mary and how that she was willing to be used by God in a dynamic way. And she believed. And so you just believe, and I know that God's going to provide rest to you. So, Father, I pray a blessings to your people today. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray that there's more capacity in our life, God, yes, because Father. we prioritized you. Father, we pray today as well that the things that are not essential in our life, Lord, that we, we get rid of those things. We see those things reduced. Yes. Father, that we prioritize our life. We trust yes, you Lord. and that we focus on the relationships with you first, God, and everyone yes, else Lord. in our life, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and God, then it gets accomplished for your glory. So, Lord, you're, you, we just God. always say it. Lord, bless us. Keep us. Make your face shine upon us. Be gracious to us. Lift your countenance upon us and give us peace. And, Father, we thank you that we're covered by a name greater than any other name. That's the name of Jesus. Jesus. And hope and life provides. Jesus provides hope and life, which is hope for today and life for tomorrow. God bless. We love you guys. Love we'll you see church. you for midweek. And, of course, uh, we'll see you on next Sunday.